Okay, we're into another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a special review for you from the brand Crew Automatic. They are a popular Australian-based micro brand uh, that produce affordable Swiss-made luxury timepieces. And now, remember, affordable is also, you know, subjective uh, in terms of affordable luxury. That's where it's at. This is These aren't just like affordable mechanical watches here. These are obviously um, in a higher tier. Um, and I think rightfully so, the level of... Uh, execution and difficulty that they are able to produce at this price point I think is actually quite affordable um, so in terms of the type of watch, I'd consider this an everyday watch, which is normally going to be your versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes, but this also does fall underneath the category of integrated steel watches, which are really back in style, along with the typical Gerald Genta uh, designs. I think everyone from Tissot to Tudor to uh, GP and Bell and & Ross, and even now Bremont more recently, have taken a crack at the classic formula popularized by Genta. This is the Diamondback D. B2, so it's the Diamondback 2, and this is in the graphite colorway. And the Diamondback 2 case design really carries on that tradition of shape, now synonymous with the Crew Automatic brand. Uh, the signature beveled design uh, and Eclipse crowned uh, protectors, you know, they have been slimmed down to allow for a 40 millimeter uh, timepiece that really will sit comfortably on a range of wrist sizes. You guys can get this directly from Crew Automatic for 1600 bucks, uh, and it comes with both a bracelet and a rubber strap option included, which I will also be showing you guys in the video. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. All right, so uh, real quickly, uh, the box that it's in is their actual box that you'll receive it in, in this Crew Automatic it's very nice, solid, um, you know, th this is obviously one that's been traveling around a bit, uh, doing the rounds in terms of press photography and video, but I did want to share that because it is a really nice, solid, lacquered box. Now, getting to the timepiece itself, another reason why it was nice to have this is because of that bracelet design, this isn't really going to be the type of watch you can lay flat, at least not as flat as a normal watch. If you, What I'll do is very quickly uh, give you guys an idea of that. So like, it's going to stand up. So even if we close this here, it's going to have that body to it. So it's not really, I guess you could technically stand it up, but it would be kind of floating there, right? Um, so I did, you know, that is something if you guys don't uh, have a display thing or anything like that, just know that you'll be storing your watch on its side or kind of having it propped up here like this. Also, here's the strap. I actually do have the Diamondback first generation and I wear it exclusively on the strap. Uh, not to say that this bracelet is an outstanding. Actually, it's an improvement over the previous because now it has a very clean, let me give it a quick wipe here. It's a really clean transition for the buckle enclosure, but used to have like a little flip lock on it, which was great for security, but you know, in terms of the aesthetic, wasn't necessarily my, you know, favorite choice, but now you can see really beautifully integrated. You, it just has the crew automatic uh, initials there on the fold over and everything looks nicely integrated really beautifully. And then of course, that's that signature Diamondback pattern um, that it's really synonymous for named after. And then looking at the dial, yes, this is a skeletonized dial. You know what, let me do this. Uh, maybe I can get some light behind it and you guys can see just how skeletonized it is. Uh, you know, there's a quite a bit of daylight that kind of comes all the way through. So it is fully skeletonized, um, the, whether it be the dial, the movement, everything is very, very nice. And I really think that that's the star of the show. And I like that crew really embraced that. Um, really the only color, oh, let's give it a quick little dust off there. The only color uh, variation is going to be uh, in that sloped 3D chapter ring, uh, which is gray. Uh, so that's the actual uh, colorway for this one is graphite gray. And it looks fantastic. I really like this. There's also a blue variation as well. And then from there, I think there's uh, color options in terms of the case itself. But this thing is gorgeous, guys has that porthole look without actually looking like anything else that's out there, which I can appreciate it. It has a certain level of, hey, we're doing our own thing. Let me again 
quick wipes just because the amount of bevels and polishes on here are just so nice that I do want to try to, you know, keep it pretty pristine for you guys, uh, even though this is a pressed lender. Um, so you guys can see really nice flat polish there, really beautiful, lustrous, high polish with the flat brush. I'm sorry, I might've said, look at that. You can almost see my face in there. So that's how good this is. Um, and then you're even getting that beautiful high polished bevel there on the side of that bezel. And then of course that kind of, uh, you know, eclipsing uh, shape here. Uh, that comes out and is the crown guard, which I think is very nice, very organic. Um, and again, another place to show off some amazing finishing work with that bevel. Then you move on to the case back. Very nice uh, display case back. So it's going to help you again, just get more light and more color all the way through this watch. I mean, depending on where the rotor is, because the rotor will uh, slightly impair, although it does have a bit of a skeletonization there, it's gonna impair what else is seen through there, but you can see all the way through. And then uh, once we get the rotor onto the other side, all the way through over here. So very, very cool, very handsome. In terms of the dimensions, 40 millimeters across, which is great. Um, and then it's only 10.6 millimeters thick. Again, fantastic. 47 millimeters lug to lug, although it is an integrated lug. So even though that's the lug to lug there, you know, there is going to be a sweeping drape that is built into this uh, nicely articulated bracelet. Um, and then uh, Flat sapphire with air coating, just like you would expect. Um, and then, you know, again, it's just this beautiful mixture. You get the vertical brushing on uh, the case, which ties into the bezel, uh, which ties into the bracelet. Uh, there's just a lot to like in terms of when you're looking for this type of steel sports watch here that is beautiful. And then the cool thing is they really amped it up on that dial, which is where you're going to be able to get down into some ornate details and some depth there. While the rest of the case is also playing with light, it is definitely more industrial in terms of just vertical brushing, um, looking really great uh, with those high polished bevels. But here you're going to get a lot more visual play just within, um, you know, instead of light play, uh, you know, off the finishes, now you're going to see light glinting off of that really cool skeletonized movement which is actually made by Salida. It, this is still considered their CA24-041, but it is made by Salida for Crew Automatic. And it is, you know, of course you can see fully skeletonized. It also does have uh, no ghost position, which is nice um, because it's a no date movement. 26 joules, 40 hour power reserve, beats at four hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. And then, yeah, you get into those dial details, skeletonized dial, matte blasted hand, Swiss Super Luminova, it glows blue. I think it's probably BGW9, but I didn't see that specified um, on the website. It has 10 atmospheres or 100 meters of water resistance, and that is a confident 100 meters of water resistance because it does have a signed screw down crown. Uh, the, the signing of the screw down crown doesn't help with the waterproofness, but I know a lot of people care about that. Um, but the fact that it's screwed down is fantastic. Um, so this not only looks like a porthole, it can actually, you know, it serves that nautical um, uh, functionality as well as being something that's totally fine for water sports. Um, and this uh, integrated uh, bracelet kind of has that, again, that H-link diamondback pattern. It's all solid in terms of a construction. It roughly tapers from about 26 to 18 millimeters, similar taper for the strap here. Um, and then uh, it does have push pin construction though, because these are relatively thin. So I know um, at this price point, a lot of your probably case like, hey, screw pins would have been better, but I will say that these push pins, uh, you know, worked quite well and, you know, it's not like they're going to fail or anything like that. So uh, if I had to choose between a thicker bracelet with screw links um, and paying a little bit more or just getting the push pin on, on the nice thin uh, bracelet, I would probably just choose the push pins so uh, there are trade-offs from that perspective uh, but this thing's sweet so let's go ahead and get it on the wrist and see how it wears 
Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, this thing wears beautifully. I mean, like it should. This is not the type of watch you wanna forget is on the wrist. Although I will say the contouring and the wrap and the drape on it is really, really nice. So in terms of comfort, uh, with that nice taper there, this is gonna wear very comfortably, but it has that bold presence. This is absolutely a statement piece. I mean, this is a flex, guys. This is a really, really cool and interesting watch. And of course, if I get it too close up to the camera here, there's going to be a lot of lens distortion. It's going to feel a little oversized. So the aspect ratio gets thrown out of whack a bit. So what I'll do is I'll tighten things up down low here, and you'll see just how nice this lays on the wrist. Look at that. My goodness, this thing is cool looking. I, I do, yes, I, I'll bring it out just a touch. I do want one. This is, <laughs> I need version two. I mean, I still wear my version one a lot. It's really, really cool. But this with the whole skeletonized dial, the improved bracelets, uh, I'd say the one thing that is, I guess, uh, it's, it depends on taste. Uh, they don't have the hardened coating on here anymore. So this is going to be just uh, stainless steel, which is great still. Um, I did appreciate the hardened coating, uh, but it did add a bit of a dark, darker, like just a slightly darker uh, tone to the case. Um, here you can see bright and vibrant. Um, so that's another difference. So maybe if you already own one, you might want to own this one too for that little difference. Uh, so... This is a really cool one, and honestly, at sixteen hundred bucks, I know a lot of you are just like, "Ugh, that's that's expensive." Um, for this type of watch, it's really not that expensive. Uh, anything that's going to be within this style, that's going to be cheaper, is going to be pretty much an homage, like a direct homage, like uh, the exact same thing, but just a, you know, like carbon copy type of homage, but then bigger because it's going to be cheaper. So you know, they they can't get all of the. Uh, all of the specs and the dimensions correct uh, just because it would be expensive to shrink things down um, whereas this I know some of you might be feeling like this is very derivative this is actually uh, very nicely designed and it has a lot of I mean overall it's it's all original besides the fact that it has it's an integrated sports watch with that porthole you know genta style it's not like there are any other ones that have a bracelet like this or a dial like that skeletonized yes but in terms of hey the the whole you know theme of this is going to be that 3d you know sloped chapter ring is going to be the pop of color and then it's going to have this great um you know overall more organic kind of rounded flavor but with a bunch of great high polished bevels um even just the crown guards themselves are very signature to the brand so i like that it, it is you know it draws from an iconic overall uh silhouette but the details are are actually quite original so again yeah that's that's pretty cool so it wears really really nice guys but let's go ahead uh, get this uh, off the wrist set it up for some loom shots low light transition and closing thoughts okay uh, as you can see we do have the bracelet off to the side there um, and i did swap it out to the rubber strap uh you know it's all quick release so it all worked out really easy uh, and also it helps because now it can lay flat so with that said let's go ahead and hit the lights here all right as you guys can see very nice again i think it's bgw9 glowing very nicely but let's go ahead and give it an extra little punch there so you guys can see uh, it actually does have even the little uh, 60 minute index um, also uh, loomed which I didn't even notice at first so very very cool but one thing I always like to do of course is work in some low light transition because oh man I like that check that out even in this kind of dim lighting the loom really pops and stands out I whoo that wasn't expected um so i like to work in some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you'll be coming in and out of vehicles you know uh in and out of buildings walking underneath overhangs maybe just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree so it's nice to see what those finishes textures and colors render like in less than optimal lighting so as you guys can see here even though there's some harsh lighting 
uh, which typically could you know reveal any type of production defects you're just going to see a little bit of wear and tear here some smudges on that polishing from this being a pressed loner um, but the brushing there is really fantastic check out how uniform the light glides over um, and considering that this thing has been passed around quite a bit it's holding up really really well so i dig that although i'm sad to see the hardened coating go you can see that this thing is an absolute light show check out the bracelet the way that the light just glances and glints very very cool and then i like the dial it even has a lot of play because there's so many different matte finishes at different gradations um it just adds even more depth which sometimes you know these types of dials can feel a bit flat uh when the movement inside the skeletonizing is just kind of very you know thoughtless and throwaway here you can see the skeletonization is just fully done and it's just done really really tastefully as well as quite nice functionally uh being you know with a lot of light passing through it so very very cool guys closing thoughts uh on the wrist guys of course it wears like a dream like i mentioned thin low slung it hugs the wrist you know visually super manageable due to those integrated lugs which is great um so it's not gonna wear like some big beast it's not the smallest classic watch but i think for this type of watch especially with the skeletonized dial you are gonna want some wrist presence and this does that uh, in terms of model variations this is also available in a blacked out model um or a similar to this one but in steel with a blue chapter ring accent so either like this but blacked out or like this uh, when i say blacked out i mean like the metal parts are blacked out in the case and bracelet or it's going to look just like this but then instead of the strap being gray and the chapter ring being gray it's going to be a dark blue instead so very cool uh the blue actually seems pretty awesome too but my variation one is a blue dial uh, with a gray strap, so I'm, I'm kind of torn. <laughs> All right. Now, in terms of comparable models, there are more and more integrated steel sports models coming out trying to capture that luxury aesthetic. But the Diamondback and the Diamondback 2, in this case, really captures more than the look. It gives you the luxury-like feel uh, in a very bold and much less derivative package, which, again, I can appreciate the design chops that had to go along with this. So for me, guys, the bottom line is this is extremely well finished and executed and this gorgeous little swiss made timepiece somehow manages to feel like it should be more expensive and that is an impressive feat i mean there are more expensive watches from just crew automatic that they make uh, that are skeletonized dials and that's it's another one of their more signature uh you know more uh upper tier timepieces but as far as like this being their entryway their gateway into their brand uh it's really cool and again it definitely taps on that luxury feel that aesthetic the idea that it's over the top it's more than you need right it's not just finished to a clean serviceable degree no this is finished and designed to another level nothing that you need to ask for um but you'll be pleased when you get it in hand um and it's 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 a real pleasure on the eyes and on the wrist so with that said let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do it like and if you haven't any please do subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys Thank you.